So One Young World, how are we feeling this morning? So raise your hands if anybody went to bed at 9 o'clock at night. I want to see, yeah, no. 10 o'clock at night, no. Who, uh, who hasn't been to bed yet? <laughs> Good, I see you. I want to talk to you later. You've got the stamina that we need. Listen, I'm, I'm extremely privileged uh, to welcome this outstanding panel. And really, we've pulled together the very best of the public sector, the private sector, to really talk about social inequalities and how we can make a difference. The world over, we see a growing and widening gap of social and health inequalities. And this has been exacerbated by ongoing conflicts, by the residual effects of the pandemic, and soaring inflation. We are faced with a world that we never even envisioned uh, when we set out with the Sustainable Development Goals. Now, the Sustainable Development Goals, they're our roadmap. They're our North Star for how we're going to achieve peace and prosperity and a better world. Yet when we look at the Sustainable Development Goals, we also see that we're getting farther and farther away from a world in which we all want to see. And that's the wake-up call, I think, for all of us that said, if we continue to do what we've been doing all along, we shouldn't be surprised if we have the same outcome, right? Isn't that the definition of insanity? So we need to reinvent. We need to take this moment, and we need to rethink how we do things. And that's where we think we have a, a role to play, that business, if we can harness the power of business to really make a difference. And that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. I have to do two things. I have to click, and I have to read, and I have to moderate. <laughs> it's more than my little brain can handle. <laughs> I want to share with you a couple of stats, and I know your brains are probably overwhelmed with the number of stats that you've seen, so I only picked two that I want to share with you today. One, 1.6 billion people do not have access to safe water and sanitation. One in two people, that's half the world, don't have access to basic health care. Now, clearly, that's not a world I'm happy to live in, and I know that's not a world that you're happy to live in. And as a company, where we have as our mission to create a cleaner and healthier world, we feel that we have a mandate, not only that, but we have a call to action that we need to do things differently. And we ask ourselves a really hard question, are we doing enough? And the answer is clearly, we need to do more. So, we're looking at innovative, scalable, sustainable solutions that will really make a lasting impact. And our belief is that community-driven programs, those at the heart of the people that need it the most, supporting local entrepreneurs are ideally sorted to, to help us bridge some of these gaps. But often they lack the resources, the capabilities and the networks to really scale their ideas. So today, we're announcing the very latest in an example of the many collaborations that we have, based not on philanthropy. Quite frankly, those of you who know me know that I don't believe in philanthropy, not that philanthropy isn't good, but philanthropy is a one-off. We believe in strategic investments, and it's here that we hope to support entrepreneurs through boot camps, mentorships, and access to a global network of health and innovation experts to really advance the dialogue. Simply stated, we aim to deliver sustainable solutions in the places and the people who have the greatest need. So I'm, I'm privileged to be on stage with, with really rock stars, uh, in addition to Kate and David, of course. But, we, we also have here um, the Unis Social Business and the Health Innovation Exchange. And together, we are going to focus on improving health and hygiene gaps, closing these gaps. And in 2023 alone, so a short-term goal, I'm not going to talk to you about 2030, I'm talking to you about the here and now, we're going to impact the lives of 1.5 million people this year in the next 12 months.
So let me, let me now turn to Fabrice and say, Fabrice, what's in it for a business to really partner um, and help entrepreneurs locally? Well, you've alluded clearly to the fact we approach this space, this social space, l like a business does. At Reckitt, we are in uh, consumer goods, and what is critical in consumer goods mostly is innovation. Innovation drives growth, it's our fuel, um, and because it's so important to our success, we, um, we have a lot of skills in the innovation area. Now, if you think of uh, marketing, understanding markets, unveiling insights, unveiling trends, coming up with creative solutions to find ways to solve old age problems, um, really um, scaling these uh, solutions as well as getting the financial returns on our investment. That's what we do for a living. That's what the private sector is, um, is really good at. So if you bear that in mind, um, we see our role as a catalyst, accelerator for change, and that change should obviously be meaningful and, and sustainable. So uh, you ask me about what that concretely entails, and um, there's cash, obviously. Business can bring cash to social entrepreneurs, but there's much more than that. We can bring our own capabilities. There's a mentorship element that we can contribute to. We are savvy at mobilizing resources, all kinds of resources. And uh, we know how to organize thriving ecosystems around, uh, around innovators. And social entrepreneurs are cutting edge innovators. You, you mentioned it. They find concrete solutions to big problems, and they bring these where they are the most needed, at the heart of the communities. Um, what's interesting is uh, not just what we bring, but it's the alchemy between the two parties. It's how they come together. The social entrepreneurs do what they do, and um, we bring our know-how to scale their solution. So if you will, their impact and our impact together can get to a, a much, much greater result. Um, so it's very much in the spirit of that partnership, collaboration, strength that um, today we make the announcement you, you mentioned about. Um, today we are announcing the creation of the Fight for Access Accelerator. And um, we announce it with our two uh, long-standing partners, world-class innovators, UNUS Social Business and uh, the Health Innovation Exchange. Together, we are going to target SDG 6, water, sanitation, hygiene, but we're also going to tackle uh, many more of the SDGs within the SDG wheel. And um, what we are going to do, what the social entrepreneurs and, uh, and the accelerator are going to do, is um, to drive health impact, is to create jobs, is to help reduce poverty, it is going to help create sustainable, meaningful change. Um, as every business, we think KPIs. We have our own KPIs for that project. We want to have created at least 25 social enterprises within the first year across six geographies. And we know that um, these 25 social enterprises are going to help us accelerate our fight for access for health. Now, there's also a collective power within Reckitt that this network will be able to tap into. We have 45,000 colleagues all over the world. We have a few amazing ones in this very room today. <laughs> and um, these 45,000 people somehow, in their own way, they're all experts at health, hygiene, and, and nutrition. But they also can become your passionate advocates, the passionate advocates of the network and the social enterprises within it. Um, they, in return, get the opportunity for, for many of them, hopefully, to work side by side with social entrepreneurs. And uh, that also can be a life altering experience. So uh, Pradeep and Monica are going to tell you a, a little bit more about this, much, much more concretely than, than I've done. I just want to 
maybe leave you with one thought, um, which comes back to your point on philanthropy versus social business. It's this quote from uh, Mohamed Yunus, which um, I, I find so pertinent. Um, he once said that one charity dollar has one life, but one social business dollar lives seven times over. And that's exactly how we approach that space. So for many of you, um, Monica should be a role model for you because she's been cited as uh, one of the 40 under 40. Uh, so she is really a role model. And for all of you, I do encourage you to reach out to Monica, sorry for that, <laughs> um, to, to learn more about social business and how you can play a role. But Monica, tell us from your perspective, how will social entrepreneurs really help drive the delivery of the SDGs? Well, the very idea of social business, as we just heard, is to use the power of business, innovation, ingenuity, resource efficiency to tackle problems that really matter. And we think what really matters are the SDGs and a world of three zeros, zero poverty, zero net carbon emissions, and zero unemployment. We've recently celebrated our 10-year anniversary as an organization at UNO Social Business. And over those past 10 years, the social businesses in our portfolio have served over 17 million customers, have supported 1.3 million incomes, and have helped to award it <clears throat> over 5 million tons of net carbon emission. I think that's a very proof that social business works. It's not just a concept. It works on the ground in tackling those problems that are really important right now. It also works for the purposeful transformation of large corporations uh, towards purposeful business, what we also just heard. Now, when we bring those two together, entrepreneurs on the ground who tackle the most pressing problems and the power of multinational companies like Racket, we can truly scale impact. And that's why we are so excited about the Fight for Access Accelerator. We're just in the process of selecting our first cohort of social entrepreneurs in Brazil and in South Africa. Um, Brazil is a country, for example, that has a lot of uh, clean water resources, but the access to that is distributed very unequally. So 65% of Brazilians who don't have access to clean water live in rural areas. That's something that we specifically target with our accelerator. In South Africa, for example, um, <clears throat> infrastructure is a real problem. Over 50% of wastewater treatment facilities are in well, bad shape, uh, to put it mildly. Um, climate change is contributing to existing droughts and for 2030, um, so just in seven years, basically, a 70% water deficit is predicted in South Africa. So I really think um, we need a lot of solutions and we need them at scale. Um, and that's what we want to do with our Fight for Access Accelerator together with Racket to really bring those solutions that are there already on the ground by those amazing social entrepreneurs, take them, bring them together with Racket employees and their power, their network, um, their expertise and knowledge, and really make them as big as they deserve to be to solve those problems. Yeah, thank you. So Pradeep, now, now over to you. Now, for those of you that don't know, Pradeep has been inside the UN system for 25 years, working for UNAIDS. And he stepped aside from that role in UNAIDS in order to create the Health Innovation Exchange. So Pradeep, why did you take that step in your career? And why is now the right time to make a difference? Thank you very much, Patty. Uh, leaving the UN, probably other than my wife uh, calling me the dinosaur of the UN, uh, that might have been the reason. But actually, I think what is happening, I think you said it uh, nicely at the beginning, one out of two people don't have access to healthcare. And we have seen what COVID did to the world. We have seen the lack of resilient health systems, what it means. And we are not too far from the next pandemic. So we really need to invest now in building solutions that will help us to save lives as uh, 
we see the shift in healthcare. So that's, that's something which uh, I was passionate about. And I think you said that the traditional models uh, don't really work. So if we really need to have impact, we need to do business differently. Philanthropy <coughs> hasn't worked. It won't work because it's not sustainable. And we need to find new models. So that's where I wanted to see how can we do that. And that's where the uh, whole idea of the women and innovation uh, came down. Um, maybe let me ask a very quick question. Um, OK, you have the answer there. Um, uh, uh, wrong cue. But uh, what is fascinating is that 70% of healthcare is provided by women, OK, globally. But most of them are not. So if you want to see who really has the ability to bring about new solutions in healthcare, it is women. Now, women entrepreneurship is probably the single most effective thing that we can do to scale access to healthcare. But unfortunately, as you can see, only 2% of the venture capital funding goes to women-led enterprises. That's absolutely unacceptable. 2%, that is not, especially when you look at the metrics in terms of returns, 35% better returns annually when you invest in women-led businesses and they create six times more jobs. So great, this is where we need to start investing. And what are we trying to do next? And that is where I go back to what, uh, what you said, Fabrice. Uh, the traditional model has been to provide charitable funding, and that is just not good enough. So we said it is great. How many of you give to charities? Uh, how many of you are happy with giving to charity? Fantastic. Continue to do that. But more than anything else, what I see is that when you're giving charity to charity, you're given the money and you feel good about it, but you're not giving yourself. What we want to be able to do is to bring you your expertise, your networks, and what you can deliver uh, in support of these innovators. And that's where we decided to create a community of people like you who can support these innovators. And that is where we are using an NFT. How many of you are familiar with NFTs? Fabulous. So you will see the NFT. This is the first time we are showing this uh, in an audience. We are launching this. So what we are doing is to create the NFT. We will be uh, creating 10,000 PFPs. And we are raising funds and connecting social businesses in Africa. This is the Africa collection. We are connecting social businesses in Africa with capacities that spread all over the world. So we will be launching this, and uh, what can you do about it? We really want you to start looking at the WIN fund and promoting it. You will see how many of you can spot what the theme of this particular NFT is? That's a clue. Access to water, so you can see the water droplet there. So what we are hoping to do is to connect the expertise which is there with the communities and making sure that we are able to both invest in women entrepreneurs as well as provide the um, resources that is needed for them through the networks that we are creating externally. So this is Women in Innovation. Back to you, Kathy. Communicate with us. And now, just in closing, I'd like to just invite Kate and David up and just to say this NFT that you've seen was created, and we thought, what better place than One Young World to launch this? And so what we'd like to do is to dedicate the very first NFT that's 100% for charity, uh, donated to, to One Young World and the wow. two of you in, in celebration. Thank you. Thank you in celebration for all that you do to inspire these great leaders and this world to make a difference. So thank you. Use well, it as you, you will. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. We can do it. Thank you, sweetheart. And to be very, the mic for me, to be very clear to all of you, so when we get a donation like that, something that is meaningful, Every penny of that goes directly to Ambassador Projects. Just like LEAD 2030, the $50,000 goes correctly to the person awarded to it. That is how we use something like that 
which is a donation. It's not your fee to attend the summit, it's a donation. So we will be telling Patty and Fab and Monica and Pradeep, we will show them exactly where those proceeds, how it works, and how we're using it. It will be an ambassador project, and you'll be able to verify that and follow it. Yeah? Good. Thank you. Woo. Thanks. Give them a huge round of applause. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you very much.